Beer in Australia. Wikipedia article audio. Beer arrived in Australia at the beginning of British colonization. In 2004, Australia was ranked fourth internationally in per capita beer consumption, at around 110 litres per year, although, the nation ranked considerably lower in a World Health Organization report of alcohol consumption per capita of 12.2 litres. The most popular beer style in modern Australia is lager. The oldest brewery still in operation is the Cascade Brewery, established in Tasmania in 1824. The largest Australian-owned brewery is the family-owned Cooper's Brewery, as the other two major breweries Foster's Group and Lion Nathan are owned by the South African S.A.B. Miller and the Japanese Kirin Brewing Company, respectively. Market Characteristics History Within an alcoholic beverage market worth some $16.3 billion, Beer comprises about 48% compared to wine at 29% and spirits at 21%. Within the beer sector, premium beers have a 7.8% share of the market, full-strength beer has 70.6%, mid-strength holds 12%, and light beer has 9.6%. 85% of beer is produced by national brewers, the remainder by regional or microbreweries. Microbreweries manufacturing less than 30,000 liters receive a 60% excise rebate. The history of Australian beer starts very early in Australia's colonial history. Captain James Cook brought beer with him on his ship Endeavour as a means of preserving drinking water. On August 1, 1768, as Cook was fitting out the endeavour for its voyage, Nathaniel Hume wrote to Joseph Banks with a recommendation. A quantity of molasses and turpentine, in order to brew beer with, for your daily drink, when your water becomes bad. Brewing beer at sea will be peculiarly useful in case you should have stinking water on board for I find by experience that the smell of stinking water will be entirely destroyed by the process of fermentation. Beer was still being consumed on board two years later in 1770, when Cook was the first European to discover the east coast of Australia. The drink of choice for the first settlers and convicts was rum, as represented in a supposed traditional convict's song. 18th century. The first official brewer in Australia was John Boston who brewed a beverage from Indian corn bittered with Cape gooseberry leaves. It is likely though that beer was brewed unofficially much earlier. The first pub, the Mason Arms was opened in 1796 in Parramatta by James Lara, a freed convict. Rum was so popular and official currency was in such short supply that it became a semi-official currency for a period of time, and even played a role in a short-lived military coup, the Rum Rebellion in 1808. Drunkenness was a significant problem in the early colony. 19th century Drunkenness was a prevailing vice. Even children were to be seen in the streets intoxicated. On Sundays, men and women might be observed standing round the public house doors, waiting for the expiration of the hours of public worship in order to continue their carousing. As for the condition of the prison population, that, indeed, is indescribable. Notwithstanding the severe punishment for sly grog selling, it was carried on to a large extent. Men and women were found intoxicated together, and a bottle of brandy was considered to be cheaply bought for twenty lashes. All that the vilest and most bestial of human creatures could invent and practice, was in this unhappy country invented and practiced without restraint and without shame. 
As a means of reducing drunkenness, beer was promoted as a safer and healthier alternative to rum. The introduction of beer into general use among the inhabitants would certainly lessen the consumption of spirituous liquors. I have therefore in conformity with your suggestion taken measures for furnishing the colony with a supply of ten tons of porter, six bags of hops, and two complete sets of brewing materials. 20th Century Although modern Australian beer is predominantly lager, early Australian beer were exclusively top-fermented and quick-maturing ales. Lager was not brewed in Australia until 1885. Early beers were also brewed without the benefit of hops, as no one had successfully cultivated hops in Australia and importation was difficult. James Squire was the first to successfully cultivate hops in 1804, and he also opened a pub and brewed beer. The Government Gazette from 1806 mentions that he was awarded a cow herd from the government for his efforts. 21st Century In September 1804, a government-owned brewery opened in Parramatta, followed by a rival privately owned brewery three months later. The government brewery was sold two years later to Thomas Rushton, who was its head brewer. Brewing rapidly expanded in all of the Australian colonies and by 1871 there were 126 breweries in Victoria alone, which at the time had a population of only 800,000. Beers by Region Notable events from this period include by 1900 the number of breweries had begun to dwindle as a result of the recession of the 1890s. In 1901, just after Federation, the new federal government passed the Beer and Excise Act. This act regulated the making and selling of beer and made home brewing illegal. The provisions in this act, regarded by many as draconian, led to the closure of many breweries. In Sydney 16 out of 21 breweries closed either immediately after the Act's introduction or soon afterwards. The remaining breweries began a process of consolidation, with larger breweries buying out the smaller ones. Within a short period of time, only two breweries remained in Sydney, Tooth's and Toohey's. In Melbourne, Five breweries merged in 1907 to form the giant Carlton and United Breweries. Beers produced using traditional methods Since 2011, Kieran owned Lion Nathan and Sab Muller owned Foster's Group own every major brewery in Australia, with the exception of Cooper's. Bogues Brewery, previously owned by San Miguel, was sold to Lion Nathan for $325 million in November 2007. In 2006 Bogues Brewery reported total revenues of $92 million. Although Foster's Lager is not a popular domestic beer in the 21st century, its popularity internationally has grown and the product is made mostly for export. In January 2005, the brand was one of the 10 best-selling beers globally. The introduction of the Tap King product by Lion Nathan in mid-2013 caused controversy due to the perceived impact upon alcohol venues. The product is a home draft beer dispenser and raised concerns regarding lower patronage rates for venues due to a greater incentive for consumers to drink beer in home environments. The product is sold with a CO2 gas chamber that is cooled for 8 hours prior to use. Before Federation in 1901, Australia was a patchwork of separate colonies, each with different laws regulating the production and sale of alcohol. In addition, until the late 1880s when the rail network began to link the capital cities together, 
the only means of transporting foods in bulk between the colonies was by sea. This prevented even the largest breweries from distributing significant amounts outside their home city. This allowed strong regional brands to emerge, and, although all but one of the major regional brands are now owned by multinational companies, loyalty to the local brewery remains strong today. Speciality Beers Notably, while Foster's Group owns many of these brands, Foster's Lager itself is not considered a local drink anywhere in Australia. Brewed under license In recent years, mixing of beer tastes due to a more mobile population, major campaigns by the larger breweries to spread their brands outside their home state and the growth of the premium beer market have started to erode the traditional loyalties. Despite this, the brand loyalties are still strong, with only Tuhis and Victoria Bitter gaining any significant market share outside their home state. 1824 Peter de Graves starts the Cascade Brewery in Hobart. It is Australia's oldest operational brewery, 1835 Tooth Brewery established in Sydney. 1837 James Stokes establishes the Albion Brewery, Perth's first brewery, which later became the Emu Brewery. 1838 John Warren starts the Torrens, Adelaide's first brewery. 1838 John Mills establishes the first brewery in Melbourne. 1853 Queensland's first brewery, the Brisbane Brewery, is opened by John Beach. 1862 Thomas Cooper establishes the Cooper's Brewery in the Adelaide suburb of Norwood. The brewery continues to be owned and operated by the Cooper family, and since 2011 has been the largest Australian-owned brewery. 1864 Carlton Brewery opens in Melbourne. 1881 C.S. Button opens the Esk Brewery in Lancaston. 1885 Gambrinus Brewery in Melbourne becomes the first brewery in Australia to brew lager. 1887 The Foster Brothers arrive from New York with refrigeration equipment and establish the first lager brewery to use refrigeration in Australia. 1889 Lager is first brewed in Queensland at the Castle Main and Quinlan Brewery. The brewery on the external Australian territory of Norfolk Island is one of few places left to brew and sell cask-conditioned ale. Its varieties include Bee Sting, Mutineer, and Bly's Revenge. While the overwhelming proportion of beer produced is lager, dark beers, and stout are still made. New South Wales, Tuhis, Reshes, Han, James Squire, and KB Lager, Northern Territory, NT Draft, Queensland, Castle Main XXXX, Great Northern Brewing Co. and Powers, South Australia, Coopers, West End and Southwark, Tasmania, Bogues in the North, Cascade in the South, Victoria, Carlton Draft, Victoria Bitter and Melbourne Bitter, Western Australia, Swan, Emu, and Kalgoorlie. Guinness has a strong following in many states, based on the growth of Irish-themed pubs and the Irish roots of many Australians and is increasingly available on tap. Guinness made and sold in Australia comes in two varieties, a keg version and a bottled version. The keg version is 4.3% alcohol by volume similar to the Irish domestic brew. There is also a 6% alcohol by volume bottled version that is unique to Australia, being a foreign extra stout variant. Sizes Beer glasses Beer bottles Most of these varieties claim to be made by traditional methods, using quality ingredients. Abbotsford Invalid Stout, Cascade Special Stout, Cooper's Best Extra Stout, Sheaf Stout, Southwark Stout, Special Old Stout, 
Swan Stout, Black Bart Stout, Colonial Mild Irish Stout, Ebony Stout, Flanagan's, Grumpy's Heisen Scottish Oatmeal Stout, Hatlifter Stout, Iron Bark Amber Stout, Mountain Goat Surefoot Stout, Oxford Black, Russian Imperial Stout, SCB Extra Stout, Swan Valley Stout, Velvet Cream Stout, The Craic, Vostok Four Pines Stout, The First Space Beer, Signora Amphora. Speciality brews in Australia are produced by both major brewers and microbreweries, and include a wide variety of ales. Microbreweries exist throughout the country, including small towns, but the availability of such beers on tap in venues is often limited. The Mountain Goat Brewery, located in Richmond, Melbourne, Victoria is a notable Australian microbrewery. As of 2012, Mountain Goat exports to the United States and co-founder Dave Boniton explained to a Los Angeles publication in September 2012. We're a small brewery run by two former home brewers who, for 15 years, have been making the kinds of beers that we like to drink. Most breweries brew to a formula something born in a focus group or in a marketing team meeting. We come up with our ideas at the bar. Microbrewery Nail Brewing, from Perth, Western Australia, produced a beer in 2010 using water from an Antarctic iceberg, and sold it at auction for $1,850. US the batch of 30 bottles was created to raise money for the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society, which assisted with the procuring of the ice. Six fluid ounces prior to metrification this glass was known as a butcher, 7 fl ounce known as a butcher, 10 fl ounce known as a schooner. Prior to metrication and standardization of glass sizes throughout Australia, Schooners in SA were 9 fluid ounces, 15 fl ounce known as a pint, 20 fl ounce known as an imperial pint. Imported premium beers have started to gain market share in Australia. The two Australian corporate brewers responded to this by signing license agreements with foreign brands to brew their beers here. Foster's Group Brews Cronenberg Cooper's Brewery brews Carlsberg in Australia. Lion Nathan locally produces Guinness, Heineken, Bex, Stella Artois and Kieran. Brewers claim that their locally produced product tastes better because it is fresher, and local operations are overseen by the parent brewers using strict guidelines. However, Groups such as the Australian Consumers Association say that such beers should have clearer, more prominent labels to inform drinkers. Prior to metrication in Australia, one could buy beer in glasses of size 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 15, and 20 fluid ounces. Each sized glass had a different name in each Australian state. These were replaced by glasses of size 115, 140, 170, 200, 285, 425 and 570 ml. As Australians travel more, the differences are decreasing. In the 21st century, most pubs no longer have a glass smaller than 200 ml. Typically available are 200 ml, 285 ml, and 425 ml, and increasingly many pubs now have pints. It is also common for pubs and hotels to serve a large jug which will be filled to approximately 1100 ml. Many imported beers are served in their own branded glasses of various sizes including 250 milliliters, 330 milliliters, and 500 milliliters for many European beers. 
with the introduction of the National Trade Measurement Regulations in 2009 there are no prescribed sizes for beverage measures for the sale of beer, ale, and stout. Terms such as seven, midi, pot or schooner do not legally specify a particular size. A typical schooner glass can be calibrated to hold 420 ml to the rim but poured with 15 mm of head resulting in 375 ml of liquid. South Australia in particular has some unusually named measures. Note that the SA schooner and pint are considerably smaller than the measures of the same name used elsewhere. Notes Bibliography Usage and understanding of these names is now generally restricted to people born before about 1960. In contemporary SA pubs and restaurants, the most frequent measures are the schooner of 285 ml, and the pint of 425 ml. Imperial pints are also increasingly popular. Also increasingly popular inside pubs and restaurants is the sale of premium and non-locally brewed beer in bottles in the size range 300 ml to 375 ml. Headmasters is one of the most common glass manufacturers, at least for the schooner size. Many pubs in Sydney and Melbourne particularly, offer Guinness style and slash or conical pint glasses along with tankard glass and British dimpled glass pint mugs. Larger serving measurements have become increasingly popular. Jugs, one fluid liter mass in German themed bars and beer towers have grown in popularity around Australia in tourist spots. Prior to metrication, Beer bottles were frequently one-sixth of an imperial gallon 26.667 imperial fluid ounces, a carton of beer contained a dozen bottles, and hence two gallons of beer. With time, bottles shrank to 26 imperial fluid ounces, but with metrication they became 750 milliliters, with the carton containing 9 liters. With the use of aluminium, Cans of 375 ml became increasingly popular, and then 375 ml bottles, named stubbies because, compared to traditional bottles, they were stubby. A carton of 9 liters of beer in stubbies became known as a slab because, compared to the more cube like shape of the traditional cartons, they were flatter and hence like slabs. Traditional bottles subsequently became known as long necks, to distinguish them from stubbies. In Western Australia, the 750ml long neck bottle is also known as a king brown because of the size and typical brown coloured glass. In the 21st century, most bottled beer in Australia is sold in either 375ml or 750ml sizes. Carlton United briefly upsized to 800 ml, however, this has since been reduced to the original 750 ml. Bottle sizes of 330 ml are becoming increasingly common, particularly among microbreweries, so-called premium beers, and imported beers. In the Northern Territory, the once common Darwin Stubby, a large bottle, is now sold largely as a tourist gimmick, but very successfully. Most bottles are lightweight single-use only, though some are still reusable, and in some cases, breweries are reintroducing refillable bottles, such as the growler sold by Four Pines Brewery, a great joy to home brewers. In South Australia, container deposits on beer bottles and cans, and some other types of beverage containers, support a well-established network of recycling centers, providing significant environmental benefits as well as generating employment opportunities for unskilled workers. The SA Schooner is the same size as other states pot-slash-midi-slash-half-pint, 
The SA Pint is the same size as other states' schooner, and is 0.75 Imperial Pint.